Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to meet you in this virtual space for ENT 2000. My name is Dr. Anita Rose, and it is a pleasure to meet you virtually. And I'm hoping that you thoroughly enjoy Introduction to Entrepreneurship. I will guide you through this course, and I will have video introduction for each module to guide you through the process and to make you feel comfortable going through the course. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to reach out to me. I've posted the syllabus and I will show you where the syllabus is located and how to navigate the course. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with you now and get started. All right, so here we are in our course and you'll find that you will land on the homepage here. Uh, if you scroll down to start here course overview, this is also available under the modules, you have some just some brief introduction about the course, how to navigate it if you haven't been in Canvas before. We have the learning outcomes, course learning outcomes, a breakdown of the grading and how the grading is done. I'll go over that in more detail as we approach the grades. And then second communication. So I like that you communicate with me through Canvas inbox over here. Select this and then it associates you with the particular course because this is not the only course that I'm teaching. So then that way I'm able to provide you with prompt and uh, answers to whatever questions you may have. So please use the Canvas inbox. If you send me an email message through FGC email, it uh, sometimes can get lost, but in I'm always in Canvas every day and I will see messages fairly quickly. All right, so next. Uh, so that I'd like to respond to you very quickly, uh, but please allow me 24 hours to respond to a message just in case uh, I've signed off and I don't sign on again for a little while. Uh, but, um, but I'm always in the course room Monday through Friday. I do sometimes go into the course room Saturdays and Sundays early, very early morning, and then that will be about it for me. Response time to assignments. So I respond within 72 hours, Monday through Friday for assignments. Assignments are mainly due, mostly due on Sundays. So I do my very best to try to get most of the grading done on Monday. If you turn an assignment in early, that's helpful for both of us because then I can provide you with feedback quickly. And then you have a jump for the next assignment. So you know what direction we're going in. All right, next. Um, Office hours, please just go ahead and send me an, uh, a message through email if you'd like to meet with me. You can meet with me in person on campus. I'm on campus Tuesday and Thursday mornings before 11.30. So I usually arrive about 9.30 to 11.30 that I'm there and you can just pop in and see me in my office. Uh, you can, if you prefer and you cannot come to campus or don't want to come to campus, you can, we can have a Skype meeting if you like or a Zoom meeting. Or if you just want to have a telephone con call just to get some clarity, that's fine too. All right, so let's move on. So when we finish this section, you go right into the modules. And then you'll see when you select modules, and that's where I prefer that you go into the modules, because all the information on the course is located in this area. Now you start here with an overview. Now that uh, course overview was what we just went through. So it's available on the home page as well as the modules. The textbook information is located here as well. These two textbooks are required for the course. Now I was told by students that both of these textbooks are available online PDF version at no cost. So please, you know, don't um, spend the money when you don't have to. Right, so, and then you will have it immediately as well. And you can get started right on the content. All right, so now after the, if we just go back to modules or you could click next and go into the next section. If you struggle with grammar, I do have some grammar resources that can help you. Please utilize these uh, resources, they're very helpful. I don't like to see sentences ending with a preposition. I prefer that you use formal language rather than informal language. We have some discussion posts and we have some written assignments that are doing this course. So I do expect college level grammar and writing. Uh, so please take heed to do that. And there's also the uh, FGCU writing lab that can help you with your writing as well. 
On the next section, I do have, I go into grammar a little bit more, some top grammar mistakes, uh, some word versions that you might felt find helpful as well. All right, so now beyond that, uh, we have uh, some of the cor course assignments require you to turn in the assignment in Microsoft Word. If you do not have Microsoft Word on your computer, let's say you don't, if you happen to have an Apple or a Mac, uh, please download Office 365. So that way you will provide the, the Word document. And you can have that rather than saving in the cloud, go ahead and download it on your computer so you have hard copy on your computer. And there may be some templates or some other information. That way it will be in the correct format. If you start using, I think it's pages that's used in Mac, um, the, the uh, formatting becomes disruptive and uh, you don't want to have a, um, an infringed grade because of some formatting problems. There's also some uh, information, resources and support for, from the university that's available to you as well. So we have that here. I'm gonna close that up and then go right into the beginning of the course, which is the acknowledgements. So please complete the attendance verification survey. Uh, that survey uh, is tied into financial aid. So if you are getting financial aid, you do need to complete that. We ask for your information, regardless of whether you're applied for financial aid, so that we can track really you know, what your interest is in, in entrepreneurship. There's just a few brief questions. Please go ahead and complete that and put in the information in that, um, that section, which is a very brief answer. There's also the honor code acknowledgement. I ask you to please be honorable, don't plagiarize, don't cheat, uh, all that good stuff. So please go ahead and acknowledge that. And then I'll ask you just for some basic information. Are you a, um, an entrepreneurship uh, major, a minor, or unsure, or a different uh, my, uh, major? That's fine. And I ask for some information on you as far as um, uh, do you plan on starting your own business? Do you um, uh, plan to take over a family business? Or you just want to entrepreneurial skills to help you with your career choices to get a competitive edge in the workforce? And then I just ask you for some contact information in case I need to get a hold of you. So please provide me with a cell phone number that I can reach out to you if need be. And I would only call you if it's an urgent matter. Okay, so after you've completed the acknowledgements, you can go into module one. As you can see, it's a prerequisite for going into module one. And that's where we are now. We're in module one. There is a module one overview section here. And you can see how we have our course level learning objective, our module level objectives that tie in with this module that align with this course level objective. And then we have the activities for this module and the assignments that are due. I know it may look like a lot, like, oh, four assignments, but they're, they're manageable and you can get it done very quickly. And some of you have already started to do it, so I'm thrilled. But each module will have this layout so you can look at it very quickly and say, okay, well, here are the activities for the course. This is what I need to do. And then here are the assignments that are due for this particular module. And now when we go into uh, module one, I, I have the modules laid out like here. This, with the, this is the reading that I need to complete. So we have the creator's code, the introduction section, as well as chapter one that we're doing reading for module one. And then the review area is like, well, what do I have to review? Well, we have a slide deck and I'll go over the information on that slide deck for you. And then we have some resources. So let me just go ahead and open the resources for you so you can see what that looks like. And all the modules are laid out this same way. So here I have a series of brief videos. Um, most of them are very brief, maybe two or three, four minutes. Once in a while, I have a lengthier video, but you may only find one or two within a module for a lengthier video, but the content's very important. So I included that in this course. So we have uh, several videos here, a lot of interesting things here. 
just to get started on uh, why entrepreneurship is uh, thinking is important. Uh, what is an entrepreneur? Uh, really wonderful uh, story of um, uh, Sarah Blakely, who started Spanx and uh, really uh, someone to be admired for her entrepreneurial ventures. Uh, here's just a very brief video on the Tesla autopilot, you know, self-driving car. It's kind of cool. And then we have uh, Robin Chase, who started a business very similar to um, the uh, Schultz, who started Starbucks, right? So she went to another country and she saw something that was being done in a different country and thought, oh, I'm going to bring that back to the U.S. And so very similar how Starbucks started. So, and these are, there are still so many other opportunities like this out there in the world and it's inspirational. So I hope you'll agree with that. So after you've completed the resources, the reading and the resources and review the slide deck, then we can go into the assignments. Now for module one, I ask you to please post a video introduction of yourself. Uh, here, this allows me to get to know you a little bit better uh, because this is a virtual environment, but I can see you and I can hear your voice and I know I can learn a little bit about you. And then your peers in this course can also learn about you, which is really nice. So we work together as a team within this environment. Okay, so now what we have is I have review sheets for each of the exams. We have three exams in this course and they're broken down into the sections within this course. And I'll show you that when I open the syllabus. Uh, but here, what I have is a review sheet. This particular review sheet is due in module five, which is when we are going to be doing our exam. And it provides you with a, uh, a breakdown of line items. I'm gonna go ahead and just open it up so you can see what it looks like. So here, what I put it in the first module so you can see, let me get started on this now and see what it looks like and how what I can add from module one to this review sheet. I'm gonna go ahead and open it so you can see what it looks like. It's just a bunch of line items and you would fill in the detailed information that's associated with each line item. So how do entrepreneurs create value? So you'll learn about that in module one and then you'll include that information here. There's um, the six essential skills from Amy Wilkinson's book is what we're reading in module one, and that's the creator's code. And then, so what are they? This is the information you will populate within this document. And anything else that, that is associated with module one, and then move on to module two, and then just the, the, the document will just start populating itself. I This is, a one page or actually two page document right now, right? Yep. So uh, you, I find that students have at least five pages and most have upwards of 26 pages. Now it's not required. I don't have a page count except that I like to see at least five pages, uh, but you will find that you will want to be adding more information to each sheet so that you are ready for the final. So for each exam, or each exam, not the final, but each exam, you may use this sheet for your exam and it helps you to uh, refer back to as you're taking the exam. But if you know the content and you've written it down and you've, you know, you've gone over this, when you're ready to take the exam, you, this is clear in the forefront of your mind and it will make the exam process much smoother for you. Okay, so now next, go back here to our modules. Okay, and then we have uh, the assignment here. Assignment one uh, is broken down into several sections. This is a discussion post. I have five discussion posts in this course, and then, uh, yeah, it's either, no, I think it's four discussion posts and four written assignments. And, and um, or there may be a, one of the quizzes, I think, is it winds up being a discussion post. So it becomes five. Anyway, so here's what I ask you to do. Just follow the directions. Here, uh, you are going to create one discussion post, but you're going to answer all the information for these eight or these five questions. Okay, so here we'll visit Gapminder, we'll review this information, 
And then we will write what our findings are, uh, what surprised us the most and explain why, how so. Okay, and then uh, when we go to Dollar Street, then go ahead and review this information, follow the directions, and then answer these three questions. And then finally, the world population, what surprised you the most, provide that information in the discussion post. So one discussion post answering all five questions. And then um, I don't require APA seventh edition style or format. However, I do expect college level writing. So please don't write your discussion post like a text message. Use formal language and college level language. Uh, and so I do expect that. There's no actual minimum word count, just include what you think is important that you need to convey. And then I ask you to respond to two of your peers by Sunday. So the discussion is due whenever it's due, the response guidelines, please respond to two of your peers by Sunday. Now for the discussion posts, it's out of the way here, the rubric for all discussion posts are located right up here for these three dots. So when you select that and then open show rubric, you will see the rubric and how the grading is done for this discussion post. Follow the posted guidelines for the course, use college level writing, respond to the peers. And this is how the grading is broken down. All right, so that is our first, and we can see someone has already uh, has a discussion uh, posted. So thank you for that. Uh, very, really, that's fabulous. Okay, so now what I'd like to do is go to the next item here in our module. And that is the quiz. So the quiz is really just another discussion post. It's, it is a quiz, it's an assessment. There's a video, I'll go ahead and open it up for you so you can see what it looks like. There's a video in here, uh, interesting video. Joe Abrams wrote this book on entrepreneurial DNA. It, it does have an interesting theoretical concept and um, you may agree or you may disagree, uh, but it is interesting and there's some backing to support it, right? Or there's research to support this. So go ahead and view the video and then go ahead and click the link here take the very brief assessment and see where you fall and let us know in the course where you are as far as your DNA. And we also have uh, some, uh, we can see here, Flower has uh, included her information. Thank you so much, Flower, for being first to post in both discussions. All right, so now what I'm going to do next is I would like to just show you the syllabus. I know we have everything in our modules here, which is really nice and compact. It makes it easy for us to follow the information. Okay, so now, and then we go to module two and we're starting module two very shortly. And I will post a video for module two as well, and kind of guide you through it so you have a good feel for it. But because this is my first video and I'm introducing you to the course, I want to show you the syllabus. It's over here. And when you open the syllabus, I'm going to download it here and go ahead and open it for you. So you get, and then you can see just some basic information about the course, uh, the textbook, the grading, some of the information I've already gone over, the learning outcomes. Uh, let's see, there's some other useful things in here, but the last part of this is the course schedule. So if you want to just one page at a glance, what are we doing in this course and when are the assignments due? It's all laid out on one, you know, concise page that makes it easy for to follow. So here we have all the due dates. Uh, I know I've just jumped into this course today and today is the 18th. I will have some leniency on the due date because some of you may not be aware that the assignments are due today. So uh, don't worry if it's a day or two late, not a problem, but you do wanna get on board and start staying on track with the timeline scheduled for this course, which actually ends June 24th. Okay, so here I have all the due dates in the course. I have all the readings associated with all the topics within the course. Each exam is, is broken down per section of the course. 
So you can see how um, this all plays out and it's a very manageable uh, timeline to follow. And I think you'll appreciate the timeline associated with this. Now, I do wanna mention though, because this is an accelerated course, we do have, uh, you know, it's, it's a significant amount of work. There's some reading involved here. The, the books are fairly short. They're not lengthy readings. Um, the All In Startup may, is a little bit longer than the Creator's Code book, but it's an interesting storyline and I hope you will enjoy it. All right, so now I um, want to get back into the course now and go into the slide deck for this module one. And uh, here we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and download that for you. Let's see if I want to get talk. Oh, there we go. And I don't like doing it through here because it cuts off part of it. So I'm just gonna open it up in, in uh, PowerPoint so I can go over it that way with you. So for the other modules, like when we go into module two, uh, of course the, the video lecture will be briefer. Um, you can certainly reach out to me if you have any questions and you need clarity in any way. I'm very happy to respond to you. Uh, and, um, and I want you all to succeed in this course. Okay, so let me just go ahead. We'll get started here. So of course we can't do introductions, but please, you know, uh, do this in the uh, video introduction section so you can address some of this information. Uh, the syllabus, I went over that information with you. We have some several out key outcomes that we're looking to uh, achieve within this course. And then we have, these are the three sections of the, that are, of the course that are broken down within the syllabus. And then each exam is associated with, with these items. Incidentally, I have found that the review sheets the students that complete the review sheet thoroughly score very high on each exam. And the exams are, are, are a large part of your grade. So you do want to take heed to complete, thoroughly complete the review sheets and have that information available for you when you're taking the exams. Um, so, you know, this is just some metaphor that I use is like when you're attending this course is really think of yourself as attending a board meeting. Like, how do you present yourself? You know, you do certainly want to attend every meeting. You want to, you know, be, be mindful of um, being present in the course room and going over the information that you need to go over. Well, as far as arriving on time, you just need to arrive periodically, uh, but frequently. And then be sure to turn your work in on time, right? So we don't actually have set meetings, but we do have set deadlines. So you do want to be able to um, read your materials and turn in your work uh, before the deadline. Uh, and then certainly, um, you know, have an eagerness, eagerness to learn and contribute to the conversation within the discussion posts. Uh, I think it's a fun place and students have told me that they really enjoy the discussion posts and learning from their peers. So what else, what else can we do? Um, it's really, it's a, it's a good place. I love, uh, you know, teaching virtually this way. I've done it for many, many years. And um, so I'm really looking forward to meeting all of you in this course. We have here this uh, little topic here, a crisis is a terrible thing to waste. Being that whenever there is an issue going on, perhaps a pandemic or inflation or something that's going on in the world, there are opportunities and there are many entrepreneurs taking advantage of those opportunities. So consider when there is a crisis or some sort of an issue going on in the world, there is an opportunity there. So there were, uh, for instance, uh, you know, during the pandemic, in the beginning of the pandemic, a lot of restaurants went out of business completely. But there were several that made the decision, I cannot go out of business, I need to stay in business. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pivot my restaurant business and do something different. And some of the things that I've heard were 
well, I'm going to um, uh, wind up delivering food to people instead of having them come to my restaurant, I'm going to deliver it to them. So there, there are different ways to pivot and take advantage of opportunities. So when we say luck, luck uh, is uh, luck really important uh, in an entrepreneurial venture? Well, some may say it's not necessarily luck, could be timing. You know, when you look at the situation with um, Jeff Bezos and Amazon, uh, he almost didn't make it. He was really a little too early, but he just made it. He, he was running out of money and he was at the point where he was almost ready to give up. Uh, because he was out of funds. And all of a sudden, it started kicking in and then took off. But he was a little early um, to really start that whole process. And he had to educate the consumer to get them interested in having things delivered. Now we think about, oh my gosh, life without Amazon, I'm not so sure how, do you, how we could really survive. Of course we could, but uh, it's become such a mainstream normal uh, type of um, uh, opportunity for us uh, as, uh, you know, consumers with Amazon. Okay, so um, when we talk about, uh, let's, let's go on to the next year. So, you know, what really is an entrepreneur? So really an entrepreneur, and this you'd want to remember <laughs> your review sheet, it's the process of creating value. So entrepreneurs create value, right? By what? They're putting together a unique combination of resources to exploit it an opportunity. And that's what they're doing. They're looking at how do I create value for my customer by doing something different compared to what's already out there. And that's creating an opportunity. Okay. So here are some of our favorites, right? So we have Elon Musk, who is a superior entrepreneur, um, came from South Africa and, uh, had some oppressive situations there and now came to the United States and became a US citizen and then has skyrocketed. I mean, I think everyone knows Elon Musk and what he has done so far. Sarah Blakely, another uh, certainly one that I truly admire for the work that she has done uh, with uh, a company, grassroots company came up from, you know, she came up from nowhere. She was selling fax machines door to door to businesses. And, um, you know, came across uh, an opportunity. She wanted to, um, she wanted to dress appropriately. It was summertime. She still wanted to wear slacks and, um, and sandals. And when she did, uh, she couldn't really wear her pantyhose because then you could see the pantyhose through her sandals. So what she, and then she had panty lines. So what she would do from her underwear lines and uh, the showing through her pants that you could see. So she wore her pantyhose and just cut off the toes so that she, her toes would stick out of the sandals. And then she thought, you know, many other people may want to do this too. And so that was the start of her business idea. Robin Chase, as I mentioned earlier, went to another country, saw something that worked well, brought it over to the US. I don't want to spoil it. You'll see what goes on in the videos. Okay. I uh, Here are some of our uh, alum from, from our school of entrepreneurship. So we have Wally Crane. Please do uh, look up Wally Crane online. And uh, you can see some of the delicious food that he makes at his deli. Alexis uh, is an un unbelievable artist and she's done wonderful, wonderful work. And please look her up too so you can see what some of our alum are doing uh, after graduating the School of Entrepreneurship here at FGCU. Uh, here, Captain Daniel Andrews, uh, fisherman. He's done some really interesting, caught some great fish and uh, has, uh, people going out on charters to um, for fishing expeditions, uh, but his main focus is clean waters. He wants clean waters, and that's where his passion lies. Okay, so we have different types of entrepreneurs too. We have for-profit entrepreneurs, social entrepreneurs, entrepreneur. So what's an entrepreneur? An entrepreneur is someone that works for a company that Ha, that has entrepreneurial skills, but they are called an entrepreneur because 
they're within a company. So that's their career position, but they do have entrepreneurial thinking and a mindset. Social entrepreneur is someone who's really focused a lot like Captain Andrew, right? He's really focused on the social good. And that's the space that they're working in. For-profit entrepreneurs are rampant all over, you know, wanting to make a profit. Uh, there's a nice brief video here. If you select the link, then you go ahead and go right to that video. It's just a nice brief video about three things about entrepreneurs. And then here's another section on the study of entrepreneurs. So it certainly can be taught. You're not born with the gift of being an entrepreneur. It's something that you learn and then you can repeat, uh, which is wonderful. And that you can learn how to be an entrepreneur in our school. Entrepreneur never ends. This is kind of an interesting concept, okay? So when I first became an entrepreneur and I've had four businesses of my own right now, two startups and two turnaround operations, the, uh, my first entrepreneurial adventure, I was very excited to be involved in it. And it was a wonderful experience. But what happens after you've done it once, you want to do it again. And you're almost ruined in a way, in a good way, because you always see opportunities. All of a sudden, your lens changes. When you look at the world through the lens of wow, that's an opportunity there. I can start a business doing that. I can start to do business doing this. So it's a really funny phenomenon that occurs. Once you've operated one business, your mind changes and you are now open to other businesses. So it, it doesn't end. <laughs> you will have more businesses uh, after you start one. Uh, and then there are some wonderful resources available to you. One of which is uh, the runway program here at FGCU. After you've taken a few of the courses and you don't have to be a uh, entrepreneurial major, you could be an entrepreneurial minor or just in another school altogether, you can still take the runway program and that will help you to actually start your business. Sure, it's helpful if you've taken the other courses within the school of entrepreneurship, if you're an entrepreneurship major, because that way you can, uh, you have all those resources with you. You have a website set up, you have all sorts of other resources ready to go. Uh, and then you launch your business and hopefully get funding from pitching during the runway program, which is a lot of fun. All right, so we have other entrepreneurial resources for you. One of the tools that we use here, oops, let's go back there, is the business model canvas. This is used in this course. It's also used in other courses in the School of Entrepreneurship. I'm not going to go through the whole canvas with you, but I will tell you that the, the um, definition of entrepreneurship is creating value. So we're looking at the value proposition that you provide to your customer. All right, so that's what's important here. What value do you provide to your customer? And then we'll go over the other parts of the uh, canvas when we get to that module. So how can you be a student entrepreneur? There are several ways you can do this, right? Now, I've had students tell me, well, uh, starting small is a good way. You can start something that doesn't, is not very time demanding in the beginning something you can start small and then grow, right? I had one student say, well, you know what I'm gonna do? I see students, faculty and staff would just love to go get a cup of coffee at maybe Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts on campus, but sometimes they just can't get away from their desk or if they're sitting in the classroom, they can't get away because they're in the classroom. And so I'm gonna start this business and I'm gonna deliver coffee uh, from whichever they want. Just use my app. You can uh, plug in the app and, and then uh, I will respond back to whoever wants the, uh, the coffee and I will bring them the coffee of their choice within 30 minutes. And so that can be very useful. So it, you be creative thinking about different things. How, even as a student, how can you be an entrepreneur? All right, so now we have the BOZI DNA. Uh, I mentioned that to you earlier, you want to take that assessment and then uh, see how you rate with your DNA. What I really like about this is he has the four quadrants of the DNA to make a holistic entrepreneurial venture. 
And so I'm not strong in all four quadrants of the DNA. I find that I'm really strong in two quadrants, but the other two quadrants, mine happen to be builder and innovator. Okay. But the other two quadrants, well, you know what? I could use some help and either maybe I want to get a partner or maybe I outsource those areas so that I have a good holistic business. So something to think about. Uh, we do a little bit of Shark Tank uh, uh, sort of viewing and, and um, uh, inquisiting uh, information here. So we, we look at Shark Tank a little bit because we find we love the pitches and um, very educational for us. So we take a look at those as well. Please complete the attendance verification survey of this course. And I mentioned the assignments that are due uh, for the next class. Well, it's, we don't really have a class. It's just open. Uh, asynchronous means you can get the work done during your time, in the middle of the night, early in the morning, in the afternoon, whenever it's convenient for you. All right, and then you view the videos whenever it's convenient for you. So uh, please complete the attendance verification and all the assignments that I have listed here, readings and so forth for this module one. All right, so now I've completed this to give you a, a feel for this first module. I'm gonna go ahead and sign out of here. And um, so if you have any questions, let me know. I will post the next video tomorrow for module two. And I'm looking forward to all your introduction videos so I can get to know you all. Thank you very much.